Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, and the subject of today, we're going to be talking about attachment to the results. Um, <clears throat> it's nice to have you all here. I welcome you. Those of you who are new with me, um, uh, just uh, letting you know, we have to mute everybody because um, devices starts to make funny noises. So uh, we're going to do a 15 minute meditation. And after the meditation, uh, I'm going to start talking about the subject of the day. Uh, you're welcome to either write to me on the chat box or just wave at me and I will unmute you and you can ask your question for me directly. Um, those of you who are on my system on Zoom, uh, those of you who are on Facebook or Instagram, I'm sorry, I can't get back to you. Uh, you would have to register and come through our website uh, and then you're on my big screen and then I can communicate with you directly. For the moment, let's, we're gonna do a guided meditation. We'd like you to kind of center yourself and, and bring your attention, divert your attention inwards to your own center. And just ease into this and don't try to force anything. Just take a deep breath, relax, and ease into it. Take a few deep breaths. And just relax in this space within yourself that all is well, everything exactly the way it needs to be. You're completely taken care of. You can just relax and let go. This is your time. to completely dive within yourself. And you're allowed to do that. And now I would like you to expand your awareness and visualize that there is an energy field around you. We can call it the aura your aura and this energy field is expanding beyond your physical body it could be any color that comes to you i would like to use green but you can just allow your visualization to improvise without manipulating anything and you are seeing this energy field, this auric field, any name you like to call it. Its color is whatever comes for you, but I will call it green. And this field is like an egg. It's a bubble around you and is protecting you. Now, I would like you to expand your awareness from your physical body. Gently expand your awareness to this energy field. And <clears throat> increase your limitation of your physical body to this energetic body. You're expanding your awareness. You're kind of, sort of, coming outside of the body and expanding your consciousness 
to a larger spectrum of yourself. And in this shift, you may feel some kind of sensations in your body as you are expanding. Now I would like you to go one step further and visualize that there is another field of energy, another sphere on top of the green energy field that you expanded yourself to. And there's another one and that one is gold. And that energy field is covering up the green one. So you are gradually expanding to a much bigger energy field. So now you can see the green the green field, and then the green field is turning into a golden field. Way bigger than the green field covering that. And this expansion, information <clears throat> is being downloaded to you you are connecting with a much bigger part of yourself. A deep sense of calmness is taking over. And you begin to feel warmth throughout your body and a sense of bliss Love is permeating. Throughout your entire, all three bodies that you have right now, your dense physical body, your auric field, which is a green energetic field and a much bigger golden field surrounding it. Your consciousness is traveling throughout these different physical and etheric bodies. And the information is downloaded and being exchanged. All three bodies are connected and in a complete interaction with each other. As this expansion has taken place and you begin to experience a deep sense of calmness and a deep sense of that all is well, everything is exactly where it needs to be. as you are reaching the edges 
of the golden sphere. I would like you to look down from this place. Look at the other two bodies and see if you find any gaps or holes or disruption into your auric field. Now that you have this hawk vision and you're able to look from above. Check out your auric field, check out the fields that are under you and see if there is anything missing. And if you do find any gaps or holes, I would like to see, visualize them, that they're getting filled up and coming to perfection. This operation is being done from a very place of calmness, stillness, and pure love. There's no fear, worry, anxiety here. There's a deep conviction that all is well and everything is taking care of itself. Just relax into this place that you have arrived. And allow information travel through all of your being freely in a form of light. Trust the process and allow it to do its thing without intervention.
Simply allow the flow of energy to do its thing without manipulating anything. Now slowly, slowly, your awareness comes back to the physical body from very high above. You are bringing your awareness back into from the golden field. You're shifting your awareness back to this auric green field around you. And from the crown chakra of your head, you're moving back into your body. You can clearly see all your chakras are healthy operating and in complete alignment and you're descending back into your body consciousness leave the other two fields open at where they're at no need to close them down you're just simply bringing your attention back into your physical body. It's a shift of the attention. You're coming back, you're sinking back, coming back from your crown chakra and going straight into your own center. As you come back to the center of yourself, put your hands on your heart, your chest area. I want you to see the light within yourself. The shining light. Whether it's gold, it's green, it's blue, purple. See your pulse, your heart. The love that you have within yourself. Your being, your presence, your beautiful being of who you are. The Buddha within you. I would like you to acknowledge the master, the guru. The awakened one within yourself, the one who has brought you to this place. I would like you to acknowledge that, recognize the truth of who you are, your own beauty, your own purity. Put your self judgment away. At this moment, it's just pure oneness. It's pure God, pure presence is who you are. And repeat after me, please. I love myself. 
I love myself. I love myself. I acknowledge my divine presence. I love myself. I am pure love and light. I am, I am, I am. Beautiful. Stay in the very center of yourself. Take a deep breath. And relax in this place. You may now slowly, slowly come back. This place is the center. If you, we want to, to locate a center physically and refer to it. So let's say this, this place is our center. We can visualize a conduit, a pole is running through our being, which is the center of ourself. Now we can get bent, pushed around, but then once you discover your own center, you always refer back to your center and you come back here. And this place does not move. This is this place within yourself is very still. This place is not affected by your thoughts. It's not affected by your emotions. It doesn't have ups and downs. It doesn't swing. There's no, it's not affected by the pendulum of life. I feel good. I feel bad. Things are going my way. Things aren't going my way. This place is where observes that. It's where it's aware of the swings, but it's not affected by, by it. No matter what happens, whether it happens to your body, your emotional body, um, your spiritual body, this place remains the same. And it's always there. It has nothing to do with your past. It doesn't have to do with your behavior or the way you think or your action. Okay. I'm going to repeat this one more time. This place, which is within yourself, it's your center. It has nothing to do with your way you think, whether you have a busy mind or you have a quiet mind or how you're feeling. This is where is aware of all of it, but it's always, always the same. And that's home. So, and the purpose of this work is to recognize this place within ourselves and to bring our attention to this place. Because by recognizing this place, freedom comes. The more you recognize the truth of who you are, the more you become free from the cycle 
from the cycle of ups and downs and the suffering. Now, we're talking about attachment to the results. Um, it's a subject of what I'm going to be talking about. So I'm going to talk about this for a while. And then later on, you're welcome to ask me your questions. Um, basically, it, this, is, it's, this is very simple. I'm going to keep it super simple so everybody can understand it. Is that we all want, we all want things to go our way. And as long as things go our way, we're happy whatever that is okay so from very small things to big life changing life purpose stuff for example uh, you you go to the coffee shop and you're going to buy your cappuccino in the morning and there is a big line in this coffee shop that you like to go to and now you have to wait 15 minutes and you're not really happy so, but you go back to the coffee shop the next day and there's no line and you go straight to the counter and you, you order your cappuccino and you get it right away. And it's exactly the way you want it. And you're happy. So this is a very small thing. So you get what you want and that makes you happy. And then the other occasion you go there and you have to wait for a long time. You find you don't get the right coffee. Maybe it's got too much milk or it's cold or whatever, and you're not happy about it. So now you can just move on throughout your life and look at different things. Uh, you're looking for your soulmate. You're looking for your love of life. Um, you're looking for a better position in your social status. Uh, you're plan you want to make more money. You want to be traveling. Uh, let's say, for example, you're, you're setting up your traveling schedule, okay? Now, speaking of traveling, and uh, you want everything to be lined up. You want to go to the airport, get in the plane, leave in time, get to your next de de destination. If you have to change an airplane and there's a layover, you want it to be on time. You don't want to miss the plane. You want everything to go your way. You want to have a great seat in the plane. You're hoping no one's sitting next to you so you can take all the seats. And hopefully you can sleep. Hopefully it's not a bumpy ride and the flight attendants are nice. So you want to get everything you want. And then when you don't get what you want, you're not very happy. So just look at it. And that's for everyone. So my dear sister Hilde, uh, she brought this up today to me and she said, can you talk about attachment to the results? I still have a hard time when things don't go my way. I still have a hard time with it. And I'm like, hey, you're not the only one. Everybody wants things to go their way including me. I want things to go my way all the time. But do, do, do things go my way all the time? No, that's not true. Not the way I perceive them of how it should be. So, and then when things don't go my way, then what happens? When you don't get what you want, what happens? Typically, you suffer. Suffering comes. So what's the attitude of dealing with this issue from a higher consciousness? What would an awakened being, somebody who has reached freedom, how would they deal with this issue? What is their attitude? How have they implemented this consciousness in their daily life that they avoid suffering because basically that's that's the issue is that it's not necessarily getting what you want is that can you create a situation that even if you don't get what you want you're still happy 
So if we have created a situation that whether I am happy when I get what I want, and I'm also happy when I don't get what I want, then there is no problem. The problem, we don't have a problem then. All right, so what do we do? How can we turn the poison to medicine? How can I turn an unfortunate situation, which I perceive it unfortunate because it didn't go the way I wanted to go, uh, into my benefit? And that's where the alchemist come in, come into the play, the master, the awakened one, the Skywalker, the one who knows how to cruise us through life. So, okay, let's just look at this and I'm going to dissect this issue for you. And then I'll give you suggestions of how you can turn things around and how you can uh, avoid suffering pretty much at all times in your life. The main uh, issue that we suffer from is that we have this, uh, this deep attachment to how things should turn and how things should be. And I've used this example before, but let's, uh, I think this is a good example. We're gonna use this for now and see if this clicks for you. We all have, uh, let's say you're, you're dating somebody, you are in a serious relationship with someone, and your goal is you wanna marry this person. The marriage is your ultimate goal. This is what you want to get out of this relationship. You don't want to fiddle around. You've already gone through those stages. You don't, you, you don't want to waste your time. You want something which is meaningful and is leading to something. And you want to start a life with a man or a woman. Now, you're investing into this relationship and you have been dating this person for a year or two and you're doing everything right. And so you're heavily invested by now. Two years has gone by. Uh, maybe you moved in with a person. Uh, you, you're nesting with this person and setting everything up. And hopefully you're going to get married with them. And then the next level is maybe you're having children together. Anyway, that's, that's the goal. That's where you like to go. And now after two years of and being in this serious relationship and doing everything right, it comes to the final moments that you're sitting with this person and it's like, okay, what's up? We've been together for two years. And here I'm going to offer you the ring. And will you marry me? And would you start a life with me? And the person tells you no. The person tells you I'm not ready. Or they will tell you, you know what? I realize that you're not that person that I want to get married to and start a family with. Okay, so that, that's a big blow, you know, that's, that's a hard hit. And so now an average ordinary person is going to be devastated because they have invested into this relationship for a long period of time and now they're not getting what they want. The investment has failed. It's a failure in their point of view. I didn't get what I want. And so what happens is suffering takes place. First reaction is being really angry and uh, going through different stages, emotional stages. But you didn't get what you want. You're bitter, you're upset, you're angry, uh, and some cases you feel like your life is over, um, you're completely lost. 
you may go into deep depression, you're suffering. Now, the way I, okay, that's one example. Let's use a different example. Let's say, okay, that's, that was an emotional investment into an emotional re, in a relationship. Um, does it ever happen? Uh, has it ever happened to anybody in life that they've bought properties, they bought a building, they bought a house, they bought land, and basically they bought it as an investment. And when you're investing into some kind of real estate, obviously you're doing this because you want to make a profit. You're not going to buy a um, apartment building with hope that 10 years after you're going to lose half of your asset. You are investing into it with one goal that you're going to be doubling your profit and make some money out of it five years, 10 years after, whatever is the projection. But let's say five years after or 10 years after, something happened, you're desperate, you need money, and you have to sell your building, and the economy is really down, and the real estate market has crashed. So now you're selling this building, and you're not making any money on it, or you're losing money. Hypothetically, this is a hypothetical situation. So you have really invested into the result. You wanted the positive result and you put your time, energy, money and, and instead of getting what you projected that you should be getting, you're getting something else or you, lo you lose money. And now you're really miserable. You're really disappointed, you're sad, and you're suffering for this. So these are more of an extreme uh, examples I'm using, uh, but you can just look at the different things in life, you know, whatever that is, the small stuff, uh, what, whatever. Every day you will be challenged with a different circumstance that something doesn't go your way. Okay, now I'm gonna use a different example. Let's say you meet your friend and the two of you sitting in a car and you're going to be driving, going somewhere and it's gonna take about an hour to get there. Now your friend <clears throat> likes to roll down the window, he or she is driving and turn up the music high and is just listening to some radio stuff, some commercial stuff that sounds horrible. And you hate it because you like to have your window up when you're driving, you like to have a Zen situation and you're listening to really music you really like. Maybe it's meditation music or it's soft music or something that is soothing and it's not really going on your nerves. Now you're in a car with your friend, window down, wind is coming in and high volume of some kind of disturbing music. And now you're kind of suffering, you're hating it. And now you're stuck here for one hour. So the next thing is you may ask your friend if he's, he or she is willing to roll up the window. Uh, if we're gonna bring the sound of music down and maybe your friend does it for two minutes but since he or she's used to doing it her own way, again, the window goes down and the sound goes up. And, and you're suffering. You're angry. You're pissed off. You, don't, you may not even be aware of it, but you just start to get really contracted and situation has turned around. So you're, you're not getting what you want. So... Pay attention to this because I do that all the time. When I'm in a situation that all of a sudden I start to detect that I'm suffering, uh, I didn't get what I want, whatever that is. Let's say, you know, that just happened lately when I was in Sweden. I'm in Gothenburg. I um, get into my Airbnb. 
I check into my Airbnb and the apartment is not what I wanted. And I'm not happy about it. This literally happened two weeks ago. And I'm not happy about it. And I'm kind of cooking inside, you know, I'm pissed off, I'm upset. It's far away from every, everything. Uh, it's not what it looked like in the pictures. Uh, the bathroom is super tight and my mind's agitated. Now, whatever I'm doing, I'm just bitching and nagging about it. And there's just a moment of, so this is happening. It's a natural phenomenon of the mind. The mind is going to be complaining about it. And there was a moment that all of a sudden I realized that, wait a minute, I'm suffering. I'm literally in my head suffering. And it was like, okay, Zaratustra, what are you suffering of? What's going on? Why, why are you upset? Why are you going to this contraction and all of a sudden life is shit and everything's wrong and uh, you're cooking? And it was like, let me, let me do a diagnostic check. Let me see what's going on. And then all of a sudden I realized, oh, the reason I'm going through this process is because I didn't get the Airbnb apartment I wanted. The location is not where I want it to be. This is on a hill far away from every, any coffee shops or restaurants or any action. I have to literally walk for 15 minutes or I got to get an Uber. And that's not what I want. If I'm in Gothenburg or Stockholm, I want to be in the middle of everything. I don't want to have to take the metro or take a taxi or walk for 20 minutes to get to what I want. I want everything around me. I want it there. But now I'm not getting what I want. So I'm not happy. Does it sound familiar to you? Huh? You're not getting what you want. Your friend is not rolling up the window and bringing down the music. The man or the woman you were investing in is not going to marry you, doesn't want to start a life, or is not ready, or maybe it's not even you. Who knows? Maybe he, she is just not ready for it, doesn't feel secure financially, or whatever is the story. Who knows? And the real estate uh, investment you invested in, you lost money. Or you bought Bitcoin and everybody was talking into Bitcoin, Bitcoin, da, 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 da. You bought the Bitcoin and then Bitcoin dropped 90%. And you lost, you lost. And now you're not patient to wait for a few years for it to come back. Whatever is the scenario, from little stuff to big stuff, from getting your cup of coffee in a coffee shop to a marriage situation. Uh, Rosalie, hang in there. Let me finish up what I'm doing and then I get back to you, honey. Okay, just be patient with me. Um, the, this is the key. Is number one is this heavy attachment to results means that I'm investing into this because I want to get this out of it. And of course, that's a daily thing. We're all doing it. Okay. I'm not going to put a retreat in Sedona, Arizona, hoping no one's going to show up to my retreat. So, and then if I don't get the, the right number of people, I'm not happy about it, naturally. Or you're not going to have a great party, throwing a wonderful party. You've been cooking for two days. Invite 40 people to your party and five people show up. Somehow people don't, didn't come or they didn't get the message or something happened. You're not happy about it. So this happens all the time in our lives. So what do we want to do? Is my happiness, am I going to base my happiness, my mental and emotional equilibrium 
based on whether things go my way or not. Is this where my happiness is? Is my happiness depending on <clears throat> a woman wanting me or not wanting me? Is this going to, whether she accepts me or rejects me, is this where my happiness is? Am I going to be miserable in my life because she told me no? Am I going to be miserable in my life because I lost money in the stock market, which I did? Is that where my happiness is? Am I going to be happy or unhappy because my, my favorite football team or basketball team or whatever team is losing or lost in the finals? And now I'm going to be miserable for a long period of time. So is it, is it coming from the outside? Or it's my happiness is within myself. Am I complete and fulfilled and okay with myself the way I am, as is, whether I get this or I don't? Can I stay in this place? Or it's conditional. Is my happiness conditional, based on conditions? Or it's here all the time and beyond whether things go my way or not? You want to look at that. It's very important. Really pay attention to it because this is a very good subject we're talking about because this is something we're dealing with it every day. Literally, Every day, life creates a circumstance that you have to deal with a situation that you didn't get what you wanted. Whatever that is, whether you wanted your kids to get great, great grades, whether, whatever is the situation, this is a vast, it's, it's unlimited. It just keeps going into every facet of your life, from your health, from your emotions, from your spirituality, wherever you're investing your energy and you don't get what you want. Now, why are you unhappy and why are you suffering? What, what brings this suffering? Is that What's the cause of it? Where is the root of this suffering? Let's look at the roots of it. So we're kind of looking at different angles and, and understanding slowly, okay, I didn't get what I want, right? But what pulls the trigger that creates the suffering inside you? I understand you didn't get what you want, and that's very apparent. You don't need to have a doctorate in quantum physics to understand that. That's a very, very simple thing. I didn't get what I want and I'm not happy. But what's triggering that? It's this sense of control. That sense that you are in control that you want to manipulate things to go your way. And when you can't have things going your way, now it brings you to this place that you're not in control. You're not in control of circumstances and you weren't able to manipulate things to go your way so you didn't get what you wanted and you feel miserable. And of course, you're going to try again and again and again. Now, what someone, a person who has reached a higher level of consciousness will do is completely switching the 
way they look at it. And instead of looking at this as if I am in control of manipulating events in life to go my way, to that existence knows more than I do. And if I don't get something, let's say I've invested into this relationship and at the end of the day, I don't get what I want. Something else happened. Is can I let go of my sense of control? And can I, can I trust in life? Is it possible that the higher power, that which is running the show, is it possible that the existence, the grand intelligence, life, God, that, whatever that is, knows more than I do? Because there is something here that runs the show. There is a power that gives life, and that power takes life. There is a power here that is managing these planets turning around themselves, and then they're going around the orbit and turning around the planet sun. There is something here, some intelligence that moves you from autumn to winter and then there is this period of hibernation everything goes into hibernation and then leads you into spring that everything comes out of hibernation and opens up and then moves into summer so these seasons keep repeating themselves one after the other there's an intelligence that turns the day into night and night to day. Something works perfectly. Something keeps operating whether things go my way or don't go my way. It does its operation. There's an intelligence here that operating my body. So am I really in control of, let's say I have an apple, I chew my apple, and then after I chew it and I swallow it, I'm not in control of it anymore. There's not much I can do about it. Everything else is going to happen automatically. But do I decide like, as this apple reaches my stomach, uh, do I talk to my pancreas that, oh, okay, Mr. Pancreas, now you need to uh, secrete some pancreatic, pancreatic juices. Um, Mr. Stomach, now you need to secrete some uh, hydrochloric acid to digest the apple. And then after that, it's just gonna go to small intestine. Um, I'm not in control of that. Something is running the show. Now, when I sleep at night, everything is functioning in my body. On a healthy person, everything is functioning perfectly. So who's running that? Who's in control of that? So what I'm referring to is that there is something much greater than you and I, than human will, Something is here. It's undeniable. We can't just say it doesn't exist. Um, that is running the show. And long time ago, I have come to this understanding and peace with it that I'm trusting this thing, whatever that thing, whatever name you want to give it, the spirit, intelligence, God, life. I'm trusting it. Something's, something's been here ever since the ever since. And this thing knows what's up. Something bigger than me is running the show. 
And this thing was running the show before I was born. Where, who was running life and the world before you were born? Who was in charge of it? Certainly it wasn't you or me. And who's going to run the show after you and I exit from this, this life? Something has been here and is, is way more wise and intelligent than what I can, I can grasp. So if I see that and I trust in life, I trust the force of life, then when something doesn't go my way, so I invested into this whatever situation it is from a small thing as far as moving into an Airbnb apartment to a major life investment, whether it's an investment of marriage or family and kids or it's investment in a career or real estate or whatever that is. And that thing doesn't go my way. It falls apart. The way I look at it, is for me is initially there's a hit. Something hits me and of course I'm disappointed. That's a natural reaction of the nervous system. If you're in a body, you're a human being and you have nervous system and you feel naturally when you get rejected, somebody tells you, no, I'm not interested to be with you, to go with you, to start a life with you, or you lose money in a, in a situation, naturally, you're going to be disappointed. That's the initial impact to your nervous system and your psyche. But if you have come to wisdom and understanding of the absolute, trusting life, then the wisdom says, okay, this thing didn't happen it didn't go my way but i trust in life that something better is waiting for me something that serves that my higher purpose and it may not be what i'm thinking it is but something is waiting there something else needs to happen it wasn't meant this was not meant to happen for whatever reason, I don't understand because I can't see, I don't have the ability as a human being, I don't have the vision to see the entire life. I can't see all of my life. Only when you come to the very end and you're ready to exit, then you look back at your life and you say, okay, I see this happen, that happened, that happened. But when you're in it, you don't know. So something doesn't go your way and you apparently it was a failure, but I don't view it as a failure. The way I look at it is existence says, no, Zarathustra, I am bigger than you. I'm more intelligent than you. And this is not what we feel you need. So you're not going to get what you want that you thought you, you need or you want, but, but we're denying that to you because, because we know this is better. And what existence feels is better for you, you may not, as I said, you may not understand it in that moment. To you, it's a disappointed disappointment. But if you start to switch your vision and trust life and view that life intelligence knows a lot more than you do, so your attitude is like when you when you, you get what you want is great. Wow, great, I love it. I got what I really want. But then also when you don't get what you want, you're still like, maybe for a day or two you're stewing and you're cooking 
if it's really a big thing, but, but you say, you know what? I surrender to this because there's nothing I can do about it. And the moment you see, you see that, you recognize that, you have that vision, then peace takes over. Peace comes. And if you start to implement this, this way of looking at life, then all of a sudden you begin to see that life becomes very easy. Now, Keep this in mind. I'm not giving you a technique or teaching you a way to manipulate things. Okay? So don't come back to me and say, oh, Zarathustra, you know what? I've been following what you said. I'm happy when I get something, and I'm still happy when I don't get something. But I'm really trying to make things to go my way and get everything I want, and your technique is not working. No, it's not about giving you a tool to manipulate life. It's giving you the tool to shift the way you look at things. And this suffering is simply because you're conditioned in your mind, because nobody taught you this from childhood. There is not in your schooling. It's not in our education that it's okay not to get what you want because life knows better. And so anytime you don't get what you want, you're, you're surrendering, surrendering to life. So in my case with this Airbnb apartment, yeah, there was the first day of struggle in my head that I hate it, I can't stand it, what the hell, why did I come in, da 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 and then the moment that came, the moment that the realization came that, oh, I'm suffering, self-awareness came back. And it was like, oh, I'm suffering because I'm not getting what I want. I wasn't able to manifest and manipulate the situation to be the way I want it to be. Existence had, has a bigger a different agenda, existence, look at things differently. And as I know, Zaratustra, and that's funny because the same thing happened. I'm coming back from Gothenburg, going to um, Stockholm. For those of you who are not familiar with um, Scandinavia, those are two big cities in Sweden. So, and then I, I had uh, events in Stockholm. I went from Stockholm for four, three, four days to Gothenburg. Um, and when I was going to Gothenburg, I was in this fast train. I had this nice, uh, better uh, compartment. And I'm coming back and I buy the same thing. And I'm like, okay, great. I'm going to be in this fast train. And, you know, I got this... Um, I paid more money, you know, I paid pretty much twice as much to, to be in the first class, have this nice compartment. But what happened is I get to the train station, I go to the, uh, the information area, I'm asking him, oh, I'm going to Stockholm with this train. And the gentleman, uh, the concierge, he says that, oh, that train is delayed. And you can't get it at 11.30, but you can get it at 12 o'clock. But he sends me to a different train, which is, which is the, the uh, ordinary train that stops at every station. Now it takes five hours to get back. And I, I thought I'm going to the fast train. I thought I'm going to first class, but now I'm going to the slow train and I'm going to this other compartment and, uh, and I don't have a first class seat. And there is a moment again, like, what the hell? Okay, I'm not getting what I want. But then the realization comes that 
okay, what can I do? I'm sitting in a train on my way to go back to Stockholm and there's nothing I can do about it. And I paid twice as much and I have this lower type of a seat. I mean, they're still great. Trust me, all of them are clean and nice and, and wonderful, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted. And it was like, oh, well, what to do? That's life. There was nothing I could do about it. I'm not in control of a train being delayed. And I'm, and obviously, if I had a very good knowledge of the train system in Sweden, I would have detected that, hey, wait a minute, they're sending me to the wrong train and they're giving me the wrong seat. But I don't know what's going on. You know, I went to the information center. I asked this guy. I thought, you know, I showed him my ticket. I, this is what he's doing. He's sending me to the right place. But, but he, you know, obviously he did send me to the right place, but not the right place I wanted. But what happened at the end? My happiness is not depending on getting what I want. Of course, I was a bit disappointed, naturally. I don't want to pay 100 euro and taking, uh, <clears throat> taking the wrong train and not having the right seat. Of course, I don't want to throw my money away. But I didn't get what I want. And that's what life is. You don't get what you want always. What do you want to do with that? How do you want to look at it? That's up to you. You want to just be easy peasy and roll with it? Or you want to make a big deal out of it and suffer? That's really come, boils down to your point of view, the way you've been conditioned, whether you feel like it's not righteous. I mean, obviously, I can come back to Stockholm and contact the train station da, 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 and spend two days of my time trying to get my money back or be upset or complain. And, and I mean, it's not worth my time. I'd rather go to a nice coffee shop with a friend of mine and sit down and chit chat and sip on a great cappuccino rather than spend two, two hours of my time on, on the computer and the phone complaining. I prefer doing that with my life and enjoying these moments and just use that experience and be sharp and pay more attention in the future. Just be more inquisitive, ask more questions. Don't be shy. Don't feel like by asking questions, you're, you're stupid. You're a foreigner traveling in a foreign country. Ask, ask many questions. It's okay. And find out. Learn from that experience. Turn it into a positive action. Use it as a sign that next time you will be more attentive, more sharp, paying more attention instead of being bitter and suffering. Same thing, Mr. Zaratustra. Pay more attention to your Airbnb apartments. Just check them out. Go into the details. See what area they are. Pay attention. But it still doesn't mean you're still going to be right and get what you want. Still, life is going to create circumstances. Because the, the question is that you are a spiritual warrior, okay? And this is not a luxury right life, okay? It's not like you entered into this dimension uh, and you entered, you went and paid into this luxury resort, okay? It's not a, uh, Rosalie, just calm down and just, just be patient, honey, okay? All right, I'll get to you. I didn't forget you. I see you, honey. Yeah. 
the um, life is not a luxury resort. Many, many things don't go your way, especially now that you're on a spiritual path. You're a spiritual warrior. You want to be an alchemist. You want to be a shaman. You want to be a trans-dimensional being. You want to travel through these worlds. So there's life could be a boot camp too. I'm not saying that life is suffering. I'm not an advocate of that because it doesn't have to be. But what I'm saying that it's not always, a lot of times it's not going to be what you want it to be. It's going to be whatever it wants to be. And we must to understand as spiritual seekers and warriors on this path that flexibility is a very important thing. You have to be flexible and you have to adjust yourself to what life brings you. When you sign up to come on the spirit world and you want God and you want oneness and that becomes your goal because you're looking for the ultimate achievement on this incarnation, pure oneness with, with the divine being. When you sign up for that, there's going to be a lot of adversity. That, and a lot of times you're not going to get what you want. And a lot of times they're going to strip you from everything you have to show you the truth of who you are. So you can't be a sissy all the time and cry. You're just going to have to go through it and accept it and surrender. And in each level that you are put in this place of challenge, you also have the opportunity to turn the poison into medicine. You have also equally have the opportunity to go beyond, beyond that. And you have done that and experienced it, that every time you go beyond a challenge in your life, you see how expanded you become. You know, uh, there are times that I meet people, they've lost in in love you know i meet people telling me right i'm never gonna open my heart to anyone again because i've been hurt to me is every time i get hurt i say i'm gonna go back and open up my heart again to love what i say is the opposite because every time i get hurt and I'm heartbroken, and I rebuild myself, my heart's going to be more open. The container that I, I, I carry is going to be larger, and I can love more, and I can give more. I look at it the opposite way. So failure in life and not getting what you want is not a bad thing necessarily because it puts you in a position of challenge and pushes you to go beyond what you thought you can do. Especially if we get hurt, somebody screwed us over and we got hurt and you're put in a position to go beyond that and now you have the opportunity to forgive them. Your best friend betrayed you and it hurts. It really, really hurts. And yeah, you go through the pain period and then you are given an opportunity in one point in your life to forgive that person. You don't have to be best friends with them anymore or hang out with them or see them again. 
but you get, you get the opportunity to let it go and come back to love. Of course, it's not okay what they did, but it's part of life. It happens and things didn't go your way. So from what vision do you wanna look at it? You wanna stay in third dimension? You wanna stay in this collective place of becoming a victim? That's where most people on the planet are, they're victims. They go to the story of unfortunate story of me and poor me and this happened to me and this always happens to me and blah, blah, blah. Or you're ready to go to a higher dimension. You're ready to open up and enter into your 5D consciousness operating from fifth dimensional awareness. Are you ready to go there? And go there means that you forgive. You forgive this person and you're willing to go beyond the story. And now you're coming back to love. Again, as I said, you don't have to spend time with them, but you have evolved and you're able to look at these people from here and saying, this is all they know. I can't really blame them for where they're at. This is where they are. And it's deceit and cheating and backstabbing where they are. But you have evolved. So now you're not in this place of judging them. Because if you start judging them, you're back to same level as they are. You're the one who has become an adult. You're the one who's working on yourself. You're the one who's conscious. So I have people telling me, pointing out at the world, oh, the unconscious people. Oh, these people, they're all eating meat. They're not vegan. They're unconscious. They're operating from this con unconscious level. But if I'm in this place of judging, humanity, that means I don't find myself in oneness. I find myself in separation. So there's them who are unconscious and me who's better. So now I'm creating separation. But if I'm awakened, then I see them as parts of myself who's sleepy. They're sleepy parts of me. It's myself, but asleep. As I was asleep 10 years ago, 20 years ago. And my teacher had to have compassion and grace to help me awaken. And my teacher didn't look at me and judge me as unconscious and unworthy. He was patient with me. So he kept pouring his love and grace. And eventually, through that, I became who I am. And hopefully, I even become beyond, go beyond this. So it's the vision, my dear friends. How are you ready to shift? Are you ready to look at things? And you will be challenged in situations that things are not going your way. Okay, if you are in the car with your friend and your car, you know, can you tolerate one hour of being uncomfortable? Next time, drive your own car or avoid that situation. Or you have the option of asking them to stop and get out of the car. Of course, that's kind of dramatic but can you tolerate one hour of being uncomfortable and not get what you want? Well, you know, you have your challenge. It will come, I promise you, it happens. Okay, Miss Rosalie, let me see. I'm gonna go to my chat box and see. I want something, I let it flow and thing will come and it's no, just Okay, Miss Rosalie, I'm unmuting you. 
All right. Yeah. Well, uh, I have lost uh, all I had twice. And I think that we come to, to the earth naked. We didn't have anything. And we borrow the time here. We borrow also Mother Earth. And we're not going with anything back. But happy with so much get what they work for. But I mean, if I want something, I'll let it flow. If I can't let it go, I'll let it flow. Because things is meant for me will come. Maybe things to miss better also come. Yes. yes. And I choose to be happy and not suffer, but I have my ups and downs as all other. Right. Well said. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Anything else? Anybody else have any questions? Want to ask me your question? We're slowly approaching the end of our uh, webinar. Hi, Shadi. Hi. Are you at, Hello. Are you at your yeah. new? Are you at work? Yes, I'm at work. This is uh, the time I'm working here. So right now, this is my sitting place. <laughs> okay. I'm okay. multitasking <laughs> many things at the same time, solving okay. the issues. <laughs> <laughs> listening to my guru <laughs> <laughs> well i'm glad you're back at work so i can see you're happy and i did get your message i'm going to write back to you after we uh we're done with the academy yeah so, sure, sure. right thank you and i'm really excited seeing you next month in mm -hmm. uh in yeah me too me too i'm excited to right. see you and all there and the environment we were i can't forget it last time yeah i I'm excited. It's going to be a wonderful time. And I've been reading, uh, this morning I was reading about the Pluto and Saturn, the conjunct conjunctions of these two planets. And uh, I know I told you all that last week I'm going to uh, send you a link about what is happening because that's exactly right on the time that we're having our, our retreat in Sedona. Uh, the first week of January 2020. And uh, and the more I'm reading about it, the more it's like, oh my God, I had no idea <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> what, what is happening. But I will send you all a link. So Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it is a powerful time. It's um, I'm sure, I'm sure it is. Exactly. Uh, nice to see you. Thank you. So our next academy is going to be next Wednesday, same time. Um, I don't have any uh, specific events in Los Angeles at the moment. I'm back in Los Angeles, but um, my next uh, big event, which is going to be the Sedona Shamanic Activation, uh, which is going to be on January 4th to 12th. That's our next event. We only have one more spot left, by the way, uh, for the retreat um, before we're completely sold out. So I'm just putting it out. We'll see who's going to be the last person who's going to join us. Uh, after that, uh, I still haven't really figured out if I'm going to be doing anything in Los Angeles in January, but I'm presenting at Conscious Life Expo in uh, LAX Hilton, and that's going to be the first week of February. And uh, But the Academy is going to continue, uh, keep going. So feel free. If you have any questions, you can email me. Uh, our email address is info at zaratustra.tv or go on my website or reach out to me via Facebook or Instagram. Um, we also started a podcast about three months, two months ago. So uh, we're all over and you can find me under Zaratustra 5D. Uh, so I guess this is it for this week. Feel free to reach out. Thank you for joining me. Sending you lots of love and light. 
those of you who celebrate Thanksgiving, I uh, happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Um, I hope you have a wonderful time with your friends and family. Okay. Hi, Annette. You wanted to ask me a question? Uh, yes. I'm from Sweden. Okay. Where in Sweden? <laughs> yeah. Will you come back to Sweden after your experience? Oh, of course. <laughs> I, I come to Sweden three times a year. And uh, yeah. And, yeah, this was not a bad experience or anything. I was just using it as an example. Yeah, of course. Where in Sweden are you located? Uh, Malmö. Okay, you're in Malmö. Right. I, you know, I never spend any time in Malmö. I've traveled through it, but I've never been there. Right? Really. Yeah. Oh, Have right. you been in Copenhagen? I've been in Copenhagen a few, yeah, uh, uh, half a dozen times. Okay. But, uh, Malmö, I only come to Malmö to take the train to go to Stockholm. I never really stayed there. No, so. no. It was a beautiful meditation, so thank you very much for that. Oh, you're welcome. We yeah. will be emailing you a copy of this, and uh, by sometimes tomorrow, this uh, broadcast will be on my Facebook and my YouTube channel. So if you want to review it, you're welcome to. You it will be available for you. Okay, nice, nice meeting you. Is this your first time being with me? Um, I had some problems last week, so I just uh, was uh, uh, um, not uh, participating all the time. Right. It was so maybe internet issues. I get it. Yeah. Exactly. Well, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Yes. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Okay. Namaste. Blessings. Kathleen, you wanted to talk to me? Or it was just no. saying goodbye? No, I'm just saying hi. Oh, hi. Yeah. My first nice time. Thing. I was saying bye, actually. Okay. But I might see you at the. Um, uh, LA, you know, Conscious Life Expo, and I saw right. you there once before. Okay, where where do you live? In Laguna Niguel, California. Okay, so you're local. You you live around here. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Well, happy Thanksgiving, and thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Namaste. We'll see you next week. God bless. Bye bye. Bye bye.